Praise the Lord, everybody. Looks a little different up here today. As you can see, I got my, my mini helpers up here. We're going to have a good time in the Lord, but Mike is going to start us off here um, with our service. So, please stand up and join me in prayer. Lord, we ask that the Holy Ghost would fill this place. We come to worship and honor you. You deserve all the glory and praise. Please bring peace and mercy and hope to us. Thank you for the advanced, for answering our prayers. In the name of Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give the, land, the Lord a hand clap of praise. Worship with us this morning. You may be seated if you so choose.
this time, ask that you would as we go before the Lord in prayer. Just a couple of needs we want to make known this morning. Uh, Charles and Jennifer Spencer are in need of a healing touch, as well as Sister uh, Ham. She is also needing a healing this morning. So let's lift up those needs. If you have a special one spoken, go ahead and signify that by raising up your hand. The Lord knows all of our needs, big and small. So let's bring it forth before him this morning and make our needs known. Lord God, we thank you for the Holy Ghost that we feel in this place, Lord. And we come to you asking that you would just move in a mighty way, Lord, through every single situation, Lord. Every prayer request, every name that's being given over to you, Lord. Every family situation, we know, Lord, that you can move and you will move, God. We're asking for faith to wait, Lord, while you would work your will through every single need. And God, we're praying this before you because we have the faith. We know because you've moved time and time again in our lives, Lord. We lay everything at your feet this morning. We give it over to you, ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would just move and be that way maker that we know that you can be, Lord. Continue to move throughout this service this morning, God, as we bring glory and praise to your matchless name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. You may be seated at this time. Brother Mike is going to come on up and give us our announcements, and we'll take up our offering. Saturday, Ladies Christmas Brunch, 11 to 1 p.m. Sister Paula needs the final head count today for all those who are attempting. Next Sunday, December 11th, guest speaker, Rev. Many as Elaine Leany, 6.30 p.m. Candlelight service, December 18th, 6.30 p.m. 2023, 20 days of prayer, fasting, sign up for the festival. Also, we are starting to collect stuff for the candlelight service, for the candy bags. Um, so Sister Singer is asking everyone to bring in, start to bring in uh, bags of Christmas candy, and you can put those down in the kitchen, but start bringing in stuff for that. If the ushers would make their way up, we're going to take up our offering this morning. 2 Corinthians 9, 7. Each one must give as he decided in his heart, relate, not related or under compulsion, compulsion for God loves a cheerful giver. If you'll join me in prayer over our offering before we go back into worship this morning. Lord, we thank you for the Holy Ghost that we feel this morning. Ask that you would just continue to move through this service. Ask that you would bless this offering and allow it to multiply, Lord, so we can reach those that have not heard your gospel. In Jesus' name.
How many knows our God is worthy? Amen. Worthy. As we think back, we're ending up our year here. As we think back over the year, let's remember everything he's done for us. What, everything he's brought us from, everything he's kept us from. He is worthy of all of our praise because he is worthy of everything that we have. Let's continue to worship him and give him that praise this morning. Hallelujah.
Adios, hermanos. Amen. Presencia del Señor está aquí en este lugar. En este momento vamos a dedicar los niños. Amen. Hermana Alicia puede pasar y la iglesia hispana pasen enfrente, por favor. Amen. Toda la iglesia hispana pueden pasar enfrente, por favor. Amen. Aleluya. Gloria a Dios. English Church, we're going to dedicate Harrison and John Lucas today. So, <laughs> hallelujah. Um, so, we're going to be speaking in Spanish a lot here. Uh, we're, we're excited for this moment for Sister Alicia and her two children. Amen. Um, this is my first dedication. So, have patience with me this morning. It's mi primera dedicación. Hallelujah. El ministerio está creciendo. Amen. Pero hermana Alicia, gracias por usted. Amen. Y su fidelidad a esta iglesia. Amen. Es una bendición de Marty Fe y yo de trabajar con usted. Amen. So it's a blessing to have Sister Alicia here with us. Amen. To have her here in this church. Amen. Hallelujah. Voy a leer una escritora de Primero Samuel, capítulo 1. So, I'm going to read a scripture from 1 Samuel, chapter 1, versículo 20, y después 24 al 28. La Biblia dice, Aconteció que al cumplirse el tiempo, después de haber concebido Ana, Dio a luz un hijo y le puso por nombre Samuel, diciendo, por cuanto lo pedí a Jehová. Amén. Y versículo 24 dice, después que lo hubo destetado, lo llevó consigo con tres peceros, una efa de harina y una vasija de vino. Y lo trajo a la casa de Jehová en Silo y el niño era pequeño she brought him to the house of the Lord when they were little amen amen y matando el becerro trajeron el niño a Eli y ella dijo oh señor mío vive tu alma señor mío yo soy aquella mujer que estuvo aquí junto a ti orando she was praying to the Lord amen por este niño oraba she prayed for this child y Jehová me dio lo que le pedí yo pues lo dedico también a Jehová todos los días que viva será de Jehová y adoró allí a Jehová that these children would live for God all the days of their life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y hermana Alicia, estos dos varones, amen, están en el mejor lugar en la iglesia. Amen. Hallelujah. Estamos felices para ustedes. Amen. Erson. Hallelujah. John Lucas. Gloria a Dios. Amén. Mis amigos, esta es una ocasión que muy feliz y muy significante que trae todo a nosotros junto. Amén. 
como Marty y María y Hannah desde años atrás. Hermana Alicia, tú has traído su, su, sus hijos al templo para presentarlos al Señor hoy. Amén. Aleluya. Y oímos la invitación del Maestro. We've heard the invitation of the Master. Trae los niños a él. Porque esto es el reino de Dios. Amén. Para traer estos varones a Dios, esto es el reino de Dios. Hoy esta dedicación es un recuerdo que todos de nosotros son niños en los ojos de Dios. Today is a reminder that we are all still children in the eyes of God. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Y número dos es tan grande que hermana tú traes John Lucas, amén, cuando él uh, nació, amén, desde no muchos días, amén, ejército que cuando él está muy, muy joven. El misterio y el maravilla desde nueva vida, amén, has traído aquí para estar parado delante de Dios en reverencia, amén. Y delante de Dios de toda la vida. Y Él has dado un mensaje nuevo. Aleluya. Con la unción de la humanidad que Dios ponga sobre los hijos. Y la obligación de crecer estos hijos en la casa de Dios. Amén. Número tres. El propósito de este servicio es para ayudarle. Amén. Como, como madre para apreciar tu oblig obligación de entrenar estos varones aleluya en la admonición del Señor cuando ellos tienen la edad de re responsabilidad que ellos van a evitar lo malo y van a ser cara a cara con Jesucristo just an emotional guy, I'm sorry. Que el Señor Jesucristo van a ser maestro. Hallelujah. Y salvador de ellos. Amen. Hallelujah. Y número cuatro. Dios tiene propósito para la vida de John Lucas Ejercito. Amen. Para encontrar el propósito y vivir contando, aleluya, que van a ser éxito, aleluya que no van a fallar aleluya, no importa qué pasó en el mundo, aleluya hermana, es tu privilegio, aleluya y tu trabajo de guiar estos varones en una manera que ellos van a servir a Dios todos los días de sus vidas, amén y número cinco lo último este trabajo, hermana, para usted hoy, es que consagramos estos hijos hoy a Dios. Amén. Y que usted va a dedicar estos hijos al Señor Jesucristo. Amén. Y una cosa más, un, un encargo a usted, hermana. En lo que usted has prometido delante de Dios y este pueblo, esta iglesia, que dedicar su, sus hijos a Dios y su trabajo de crecerlos en Dios, yo te encargo que ser fiel a esta obligación sagrada, con sabiduría, con paciencia y con devoción. Que estos van a ser una bendición de Dios para todos los días de su vida. Amén. That these two young men are going to be a blessing to her all the days of their life. Hallelujah. And she's committing to dedicate them this morning and to raise them in the admonition of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hermana Alicia, yo creo 
y Marife, muy firme en el Señor, que Dios va a mover grandemente en la vida de estos varones. Estos varones van a ser, aleluya, varones de Dios, amén. Hallelujah, these two are going to be men of God one day. Hallelujah, I'm excited about their future and what God's going to do in them. Hallelujah. Hermana Alicia tiene la ayuda de mi esposa, Marty Fay, mucho. Amen. Thank God for Mary Fay. She's, she's an amazing woman and she loves all of these ladies. Amen. And she's going to help Sister Alicia. Amen. Um, en este momento vamos a orar para la hermana Alicia y Gerson, Gersito y John, y John Lucas. Yo invito a la iglesia hispana y toda la iglesia americana. I, I invite the American church as well. Hallelujah. To help us pray for Sister uh, Alicia. The ministry team, if you can pass in front here, we're going to pray uh, for Sister Alicia. Hallelujah. And these two young men. Hallelujah. Oh, in Jesus' name. presentar Gerson y John Lucas a la iglesia, amén, y ellos van a recibir su primer Biblia, we are presenting John Lucas and Harrison to the church, hallelujah, hallelujah, they're, they're receiving their first Bible, hallelujah, hallelujah, I'm looking forward to the day that this young man preaches the gospel, amen, hallelujah, on. God's raising up some hungry children in our Spanish church. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, God will use them. Hallelujah. I love young preachers. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Un aplauso para el Señor. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a round. Hallelujah. Applause. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. That's it. God bless you. Jesus is doing here. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, God's doing great things. Hallelujah. And he's going to continue to do great things. Um, I was on my way to Bible study Tuesday night for our Spanish. And uh, I heard God very clearly. And this is what he said to me. 
that we were going to see great moves of God in this church. We're going to see great moves of God, hallelujah, very soon, hallelujah. We have had some incredible services, but I believe we have not scratched the surface of what God really, really wants to do in this place, amen, hallelujah, glory to God. If you have your Bibles, we're going to go to Judges chapter 21, verse 25. We're also going to take some text from Revelation 19, amen. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God, I got through my first baby dedication, amen. <laughs> True. You can't stay in the eagle's nest forever now. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> There's a first time for everything, right? <laughs> Glory to God. Judges 21, verse 25 says, In those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Amen. We're going to skip over to Revelation chapter 19. I want to read 11 through 16. Hallelujah. When you're there, say Amen. Verse 11, and I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness, and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. This morning, I want to share this thought with you. Judges, kings, and Jesus. Judges, kings, and Jesus. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you this morning, God. We thank you. For Sister Alicia, we thank you for Harrison and John Lucas, God, and this dedication this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be in your house this morning, God. Oh, we ask, oh Lord, that you will move in here and that your people will respond to the move, God, and how you move, God, that we will be sensitive to how you move in here, God. I pray, Lord, that you would deliver people this morning, God, that you would begin to set people free this morning, God. Oh, that people would repent at an altar this morning, that somebody would be baptized in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, that somebody would be filled with the Holy Ghost this morning, God. We thank you for the day of Pentecost. We thank you for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, God. Oh, we thank you that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We thank you that you are the great judge. Hallelujah. We thank you for the power of your name. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated in the name of Jesus. So, judges, kings, and Jesus. I really believe that if we could do an in-depth study on these two books, Judges, well, really three books, 1 Kings and 2 Kings, that this could be a Bible study. But I'm going to attempt to preach this morning. <laughs> Amen. So I'm not going to have every detail. We're going to kind of skim over some things. But Judges, Kings, and Jesus. In the book of Judges and Kings, we find that there comes an exhaustion. There, there came a fatigue. All of you will experience that if you read these books. The people of God would live for God and then backslide. Only to fall into the hands 
of their enemies. Nonetheless, the mercy of God would eventually rescue his people only to start the cycle over again. As the book of Judges opens, Israel is living in the conquest of Canaan. They are still living in the overflow of the ministry of Joshua and his leadership. Joshua served the Lord all the days of his life, hallelujah, because he sat under Moses and he was obedient to Moses and he learned how to obey his pastor, amen. From Moses to Joshua, Israel had been a conquering people. A people of conquest, if you will. A people who saw the glory and the wonder of God. Judges chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Now after the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, Who shall go up for us against the Canaanites first to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah. Oh, Judah was praise. Oh, he said the praise, hallelujah, is going to go up first. Hallelujah. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but why would the people of God continue to backslide time and time again? Because they lost their Judah. They lost their praise. But what does the Lord say in verse 2? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have delivered the land into his hand. And Judah said unto Simeon, his brother, come up with me into my lot, that we may fight against the Canaanites, and I likewise will go with thee into thy lot. So Simeon went with him, and Judah went up. And what does it say? The Lord delivered the Canaanites and the parasites into their hands, and they slew of them in Bessic 10,000 men. The Lord had delivered the enemy into their hands. But what happens? But by chapter 3, Israel is falling away from following God. The overflow from the ministry of Joshua has now left the building. The people of God has fallen away from the holiness of God and the fear of the Lord. The glory and the wonder of God can no longer be seen. Judges 3, 5 through 7. And the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, the Hittites, the A- and Amorites, and Perizzites, and Hivites, and Jebusites. You just better understand that we're living in a time that there's ites all around us. But in the Old Testament, God was calling them away from them. He wasn't calling them to reach them. But God has given us a power of the Holy Ghost that we can reach these people. But what happened to the Israelites? And they took their daughters to be their wives. And gave their daughters to their sons. And served their gods. You better understand it matters who you marry. It matters who you're going to marry at an altar. It matters who you hang around. And the children, verse 7. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And forgot the Lord their God. And served Balaam and the groves. What happened by chapter 3? The voice of Joshua was no longer ringing out. As Joshua led them into the promised land in conquest, Joshua dies. And the cry of, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, fell dim. It would no longer ring out to the people of God. The voice of Joshua, who was the same voice of his pastor Moses, would fall on deaf ears as God's people would get caught in the trap of everything that was around them. God is not calling you to get caught in the trap of everything that is around you. But God is calling you to walk in the Holy Ghost that the light inside of you all would bring them to the house of God. (laughs) 
They could not keep their eyes on God, but would fall into the delusion of the lies from the nations that were around them. I'm here to tell you that everything that's happening in this world right now is a delusion of lies that is around us. The only truth is in this house and in the Word of God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, as there were judges that God would use and empower like Samson and Deborah and Gideon, it would only be temporary and the people of God all oh, would be overcome once again. There was an inability to find complete and total freedom from their own sin and demise and they would utterly fall into moral depravity. Their depravity was so bad that I can't even read from this pulpit the, the end of Judges. It's that bad. If you want to read it, read it when you get home. Is that stuff in the Bible? Yeah. That's why it's called the truth of God, because God didn't hide it. Amen? God didn't shine it up. He said, this is what happened. If you don't serve me, this is what happens with your life. As we move to the end of the book of Judges, we find that the people of God would desire a king. They would desire to live and be like those around them. Their own depravity would not be enough to even shake them out of their sinful iniquity. They could not shake themselves out of it. You better be careful who you hang around with. You'll get to a place, oh, I go to church, but you're still listening to that. You're still hanging around with that person. You won't be able to shake yourself out of it. Are you God? Come on. Your walk with God is so important. Your walk with God is above all else. Your walk with God is above your marriage, above your job. They would believe that a king would make them better and maybe even provide some hope. To live victoriously. But they were only deceived by their own sin. And the book of Kings would just be a continuation of what happened in the book of Judges. The first king Saul was chosen by the people. And Saul would not be able to live in submission to God. And would lead the people to fall captive to the Philistines. The second king, King David, would be chosen by God and would be a man after God's own heart. He would be a man that loved God, but he would also fall prey to his own humanity. And his sin would cause his family to live in disarray. We hear a lot of sermons, and I love David. David slaying the giant. But we don't hear those sermons about what happened with David's family. Because he... He let his humanity get the best of him. But David was honest before God. And God was merciful to him. Hallelujah. And because of this mercy, God would allow David's son Solomon to sit on the throne after him. Let's go to 1 Kings 2, 1 through 4. We find David's final charge to Solomon before his death. Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die. And he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. See, the problem in our culture today, come on, I work with a lot of youth. Where's dad? Where is dad? Because dad's taught them the wrong things. You want to teach your son to be a man? Take him to the house of God. Hallelujah. The creator of this world created man. We ought to take him to the one that actually created man. Because he might know a thing or two about how to be a man. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses. And what's it say? That thou 
mayest prosper in all thou doest. And whithersoever thou turnest thyself, that the Lord may continue his word, which he spake concerning me, saying, If thy children take heed to that, hallelujah, take heed to their way to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, there shall not fail thee, said he, a man on the throne of Israel. Solomon would arrive on the scene and would be considered the wisest man in the world only to fall prey to his own humanity and live in sin serving the gods of foreign women and the kingdom of Israel would be split in two and become a divided kingdom. The wisest man in the world fell and backslid and lived in sin because he got tired of hanging around God's people. You better never get tired of hanging out and fellowshipping with the people of God. Oh, the people of God are the most precious people in the world. The final charge that David gave Solomon would no longer ring out. It would be a faint memory that Solomon could not live out in his sin-ridden lifestyle. This sin would lead to a divided kingdom. And there would be Rehoboam in the south and Jeroboam in the north. You would have Israel in the north and its capital being Samaria. And you would have Judah in the south with Jerusalem being its capital. But what happened after Rehoboam? There would be many kings in the north and many kings in the south. All of the kings in the north were wicked and did not serve God. Only some of the kings in the south would serve God. But the people would fall back into sin once again. And Israel would be conquered by Assyria. And Judah would be conquered, oh, by Babylon. And and Jeremiah preaches and preaches and preaches to them in Jerusalem. And God even asked him that he could leave. But but Jeremiah stays and he preaches as the, the walls are burning. Jeremiah stayed there of all that but he had preached and he preached Noah had preached and preached for years and nobody would listen but it's time that we heed the voice of God it's time hallelujah that we say Jesus is my king hallelujah Jesus is my judge hallelujah Jesus is there for me So what conclusion do we find from the book of Judges in 1st and 2nd Kings? What does God show us here from his word? God is showing us that no judge or king would ever be good enough to bring what humanity needed. Now I'm sorry for that long introduction, but we're going to preach every judge and king would fall short uh, even if God moved on them. Because guess what? Just because God moves on somebody doesn't mean God is endorsing them. We get our eyes on people too many times. Wow, that guy can preach. But we don't know if God endorsed them. It's not just an anointed ministry. It's an anointed lifestyle. Hallelujah, that you live an anointed life before God. It's not just anointing behind a microphone, but it's anointing in your home. It says, as for me and my house, uh, we will serve the Lord. There would be moments of peace and glimmer of hope in Israel's history. But all would fall short and the people of God would fall back into captivity by their enemies. No matter the strength of Samson or the obedience of Gideon or the stature of Saul or the heart of David or the wisdom of Solomon or the youth of Josiah. These judges and kings would not be able To return the heart of people back to God forever. They just would not have what it takes uh, to bring everlasting deliverance from their enemies. Uh, It would only fulfill a short and temporary time before the people of God would backslide and fall back into their sin. 
Hallelujah. What a message Brother Shaw preached. Hallelujah. The void between God and man. It was all. Job's question was leading the way. And we find here in the book of Judges and Kings that it was all leading the way to the one who would be known as the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. It was all leading the way to the one who would save his people from their sins. It was all leading the way to the one who would deliver his people from their enemies. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. When God robed himself in flesh and came to this earth, the captivity of the enemy was broken. The grip and hold of sin was broken. Hallelujah. The power of death and hell was broken. Hallelujah. The way maker came. Oh, hallelujah. It was Emmanuel. God with us. Hallelujah. Acts 17. If you got your Bibles, Acts 17. Woo. Paul is in Athens. Oh, he's in a city. Oh, he he feels the wickedness of the city. He feels all these gods that they have worshipped. And they let every new doctrine and every new message show up in that place. So, glory to God, Paul got to preach. Uh, But they had not heard the apostolic doctrine until Paul had showed up. What's it say? Verse 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver, or stone graven by art and man's device. How many apostolics are here today? Come on, we got the most precious message. Hallelujah. The message this world needs. Oh, don't take the oneness of God for granted. Oh, that Jesus is one. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We must go down in His name in baptism. Hallelujah. That's the problem is when apostolics forget about the oneness of God. They begin to think the Godhead is like gold or silver or something from the earth. Don't think of the Godhead. Oh, it's the greatest thing that you have. That God is one and His name is Jesus. Woo! You are a peculiar people. You have been called out from this world. You have been called out from mainstream Christianity that's allowing everything into the church. But the apostolics continue to march on and say we're going to preach against that. We're going to preach against that because it's a sin. Hallelujah. We're not taking a back seat. Hallelujah. But we are the church of of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Woo. Verse 30, in the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men and that he hath raised him from the dead. Woo. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked. And others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. Come on, not everybody's going to hear you. Some are going to mock you. You go to that church and they speak in tongues. (laughs) Yeah, these signs shall follow them that believe. Oh, in my name shall they cast out devils. And they shall speak with new tongues. Hallelujah. Woo! They used to call us crazy, but they're beginning to see we're not so crazy because we have the one true God named Jesus Christ. There were judges and there were kings, but glory to God, Jesus came and rescued his people. They used to say the apostolics were crazy. You dress like that? Yes, we do. 
And now what's upon the earth? Gender confusion. I'm not going to dig deep on these. But come on, let them keep telling us we don't have the truth. But we got the truth. We are apostolic people. We are the people of God. Woo! Jesus showed up and changed the future of humanity. Jesus showed up and changed the eternal destination of man. Jesus showed up and broke the back of the enemy. And when no longer God's people have to backslide and fall away. Guess what? Guess what? You don't have to backslide. Guess what? You don't have to put up with the enemy's voice. You can kick him out of your car. You can kick him out of your house. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. Get out of here. Come on. Come on, we can't be spiritual whims. Come on, people of God, take authority of God. Take authority in your home. Uh, this home, hallelujah, in this home we will serve the Lord. Woo! Jesus brought the hope you can live for God all the days of your life. You don't have to backslide. You don't have to fall back into a sinful lifestyle. He brought a hope that he will see you through and bring you over. Oh my, hallelujah, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. He will give you victory in your life. And you don't have to fall into the depravity of hopelessness. There came a Savior that provided a way of escape. Hallelujah. And overcame the power of sin and death. You don't have to live in defeat today. You don't have to walk out of here with no hope and no peace. You don't have to walk out of here in guilt and shame. You can be free today and free indeed. You can walk out of here in the power of the Holy Ghost. You don't have to go back to the world. You don't have to return to your Egypt. You don't have to give in to the temptation. You don't have to live downtrodden and powerless because there's a power in this house today to break the sin in your life. There's a power in here this morning that will change your life and transform you and make you a new creature. There's a judge. And a king here today that has the last word for your life. Woo! Yeah. There's a judge here today that's willing to set you free. He's willing to take the shackles of bondage off of you. He'll set you free. Hallelujah. And you can walk out of here a free man and a free woman. Hallelujah. With nothing hanging over your head. Come on, you don't have a jail sentence uh, hanging over your head. You don't have to go back to that lifestyle. The judge is freeing you today to walk out of here. Once this judge sets you free, you can go live for the king. <laughs> you can have this King Jesus in your life today. He can be the king of your heart. Hallelujah. See, judges came and failed. Kings came and failed. But Jesus will never fail you. Amen. I'm getting close here. We're going to finish. See, Jesus sits on the throne as the judge. But guess what he did? He left that throne. And he came to earth to be your defense attorney. The same one that sits on the judge's throne is the same one fighting for you. When the enemy accuses you as the prosecutor, when the enemy prosecutes you over your sin and over your issues and your hang-ups and your mess-ups that keep you from serving God with all of your heart, Jesus is over here. Hey, judge. Hey, judge. I plead the blood over him. I plead the blood over her. He sits on the judge's seat. He comes down here. He looks at, he looks at the prosecutor over there, the enemy. I plead the blood. I plead the blood over him and her. Guess what? He walks back up to the judge's seat and he says, not guilty. Because all I see is the blood. All I see is the blood. Hallelujah. I don't see it. I don't see the evidence. All I see is the blood. How many of you have been set free? How many of you were in that seat? And Jesus began to plead his blood for you. Woo! 
hallelujah. <laughs> Come on. Let me go over here. He said, oh, alcoholic, drug addict, living a prom promiscuous lifestyle. You were in that party. You backslid. That's what the enemy does. <laughs> and Jesus just keeps saying, I plead the blood, judge. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. Hallelujah. But that same hallelujah to finish the sermon. That was what's so awesome about Jesus. He's the mighty God in Christ. Because he says, drug addict, I don't remember. Alcoholic, where? All he sees is his blood. That's all he sees. We've been set free. There were judges. There were kings. But glory to God, Jesus came because he is the king of kings. He is the great judge. Hallelujah. That has set you free. Come on. You don't talk like you used to. You don't walk like you used to. You don't dress like you used to. You don't go to the parties that you used to go to. Hallelujah, you have been set free. You are a new creature in God. Hallelujah, he is here. Hallelujah, he is here. Hallelujah, to keep walking with you. Oh, hallelujah, if you won't forget his ways, and you won't forget his statutes, and you won't forget his commandments. Woo! You were looking for a Samson. You were looking for a Gideon. You were looking for a David. You were looking for a Solomon. But time and time again, you were left to feel empty. Because earthly judges and kings will never change your life. Let's all stand. We're going to close. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Jesus is calling some of you to a greater calling today. Some of you are here maybe for the first time. And you haven't met the master yet. Paul, before his encounter with Jesus, he stuttered, he stuttered, he studied under Gamaliel, one of the greatest rabbis in all of Israel. Paul was a defender of the law of God. He fought for God against Jesus. He fought for it. But what Paul didn't understand, we were in Bible study the other night, and it just jumped off the page. Yeah. Because we got new people in the Spanish church. <laughs> They're like, what's this baptism in Jesus' name about? What's this oneness of God? And it just jumped off the page to me. Woo! Paul didn't see a man, but he heard a voice. He saw a great, I feel the Holy Ghost so strong in this place. He saw a light. He said, who art thou? What did the voice say? I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. Come on, we serve one God. One God, and his name is Jesus. There were judges, there were kings, and then there was Jesus. Philippians 3, 7 through 14, but what things were gained to me? Those I counted lost for Christ. Paul was the greatest defender of the law, but yet he said, I can defend this law? I was a Hebrew of Hebrews. But he said, guess what? I laid my title down. Because I didn't know that the God of the Old Testament was the same God in the New Testament. And his name was Jesus. Woo! Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I've suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. Woo! and be found in him not having mine own righteousness which is of the law see his righteousness was found in this law but he needed to know the, the writer of the law he needed to know the God of the law Woo! but that which is through the faith of Christ the righteousness which is of God by faith 
that I may know him. Woo! That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Woo! And the fellowship of his sufferings be, being made conformable unto his death. Let me move on down. Verse 14. Actually, let me read 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Come on. As we get ready to come into this altar, I encourage you to reach for the high calling of God today. Reach for Jesus. He is here to change you. He is here to transform you. He is here to make you over. Hallelujah. Come on. We open up this altar. Let's cry out to Jesus this morning. Give your all to him this morning. Come on. Oh, raise your voice to him. Cry out to him. Hallelujah.